Hi, I'm Ego Brown, and I'd like for you to listen to a story about a man who revolutionized the shoe industry. The making of shoes has always been an honored trade throughout history. People waited days for a shoemaker to process the leather. Then, the foot would have to be traced, and the shoe was made. It took time, and it was expensive. Not everyone could afford shoes. They were mainly for the rich. Today, we all wear shoes, made by machines, faster and less expensive than handmade because of this man, Jan Ernst Matzlieger, the inventor of a machine that could duplicate the movements of the human hand in making shoes. Coming up with the idea for this type of machine solved a big problem in the shoe industry. It enabled workers to increase the output of shoes and change the industry forever. Matt's Liga's principle is still in use today. The machine could hold the shoe, pull the leather down around the heel, guide and drive the nails into place to attach the top of the shoe to the sole. Matt's Liga was somewhat of a genius when it came to machinery. At the age of 10, he was a machine shop apprentice in his native country, Dutch Guiana, which is located in South America. Today, Dutch Guiana is called Suriname. He was born in 1852. His father was a civil servant from the Netherlands, and his mother was a native of Suriname, descended from Africans brought to the country. Jan left his country when he was a young man, traveling on a ship bound for North America. He ended up in Philadelphia, where he found work repairing shoes. He then moved to Lynn, Massachusetts, to work in the shoe industry there. In 1878, this town, just north of Boston, was a center for shoe manufacturing. As the story goes, his life in Lynn was not easy. He did not speak good English, he had very little money, and he did not have many friends. He was turned away from one church he tried to attend because he was black. But he found friends among members of a youth group at Lynn's North Congregational Church. Many in the congregation were also workers in Lynn shoe factories. His friends soon discovered his talents included fixing machinery and that he was working on an idea to facilitate making shoes. His first shoe machine took him six months to build out of odds and ends he collected himself. Some laughed at his attempts. But another man, who had also been trying to figure out how to make shoes faster, saw some good principles in Matt Slieger's idea and offered to buy it for $50. But Jan didn't sell. He kept working on and refining his idea. And in 1883, on March 20th, he was granted a patent by the US Patent Office. Demand for a machine that attached the top of the shoe to the sole was so great that the government granted over 100 patents from 1880 to 1892 to inventors who tried to solve the problem. But Matt's Liga's machine was the only one that stood the test of time. When Matt's Liga's drawings arrived in Washington, the experts in the patent office didn't understand them, and one of them had to go to Lynn to study it. Then the machine was ready for a factory test and broke the record by lasting 75 pairs of women's shoes. The machine became widely used and a school was set up to show people how to use it. It drew students from all over the world. Matt Sliga did not live to see the machine become a commercial success. He died at age 37 from tuberculosis. In his will, he remembered the people who had welcomed him during his early days in a strange city. He left all his holdings in the company that had developed his idea to the North Church and specified that it should be used for the poor. To his close friends, he left some personal items, his watch, some paintings, and his Bible. And to us all, he left an invention that changed the shoe industry, the hand process lasting machine a pioneer, an inventor, a mechanical genius, Jan Ernst Matzliger.